Hi folks, welcome back to the Frontier Western Heritage Channel. I'm Todd Kessner here in Bozeman, Montana. And uh, today we're going to look at bullet energy of the 1860 Army. And I know this is a little bit different of a video than I've done uh, in the past, but when I was doing the shooting the 1860 Army video number three and was comparing round ball to conicals, uh, also took velocities on a chronograph. And as I was putting that video together, uh, I was thinking, you know, I've got all of the information needed to, to figure bullet energy. And if you remember from the video, I talked about Elmer Keith, the, the famous gun writer, who as a youth in, in Helena, Montana, had spoken to Civil War veterans and what they had said about the round ball versus the conical uh, during the Civil War as far as shock uh, versus penetration. And so I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun to, to calculate some bullet energies and see really what the round ball energy looks like versus the conical bullet energy and have all the data to do it. And so we're going to do a few mathematic computations, just kind of stick with us. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, not too heavy, it's pretty simple to do actually. And so we'll walk through some of that and we'll compare that round ball bullet energy to conical bullet energy by doing the math. And I want to remind you as well, if um, you like the video, please give us the big thumbs up. That's a big help and uh, kind of gets our, gets our numbers out there a little bit as well. And also if you really like the channel, please hit subscribe. Not going to sell your email to anybody. Uh, not going to reveal your uh, anything personal, uh, and it doesn't cost you anything. So please subscribe, and again, that helps us reach to a broader audience as well. So we can uh, find those people who may not have heard about us so far that are interested in historic fire firearms. So we're going to take this uh, data from this 1860 Army Uberti that we had out at the range, figure some bullet energy, compare that round ball to the conical, and and really see what the difference between the two really is. So stick with us. Let's jump into the, uh, to the math here a little bit, have some fun with it. I think you'll enjoy it, learn something if nothing else, and, uh, and at the end we'll kind of have a good idea uh, physically, through physics, uh, the difference between the round ball and the conical. So let's take a look at kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is nothing more than the energy of an object due to its motion. And then that energy is transferred into anything that object strikes that tries to interfere with its motion. So the kinetic energy formula is one half the mass times the velocity squared. And our mass is in kilograms and our velocity is in meters per second. And then the result is in a measurement of energy called joules. And this prevents, presents us with a bit of a problem because our mass is in grains and our velocity is in feet per second. So we're going to have to do some conversions. So in order for us to have the right inputs into this formula, we're going to need to convert our grains to kilograms and our feet per second velocity to meters per second, which is going to then give us joules. And then we can convert joules to foot pounds, something that we're much more familiar with in the American system. Joules are an international measurement of energy uh, named after an English physicist in the 1800s. And it's something I have a hard time wrapping my head around because uh, I've grown up with, with reading about, hearing about foot pounds. And so we're going to convert joules to foot pounds. Hopefully that's something you're more familiar with. And a foot pound is simply the energy it takes to raise one pound, one foot. We're going to start with the round ball. Uh, it was a four, five, seven round ball, 143 grains. We know we shaved a little bit of lead off while we were pushing it down into the chamber. We're going to stick with 143 grains. And we know that there are 7,000 grains per pound. So if we take 143 grains, we divide it by 7,000 grains per pound, we end up with 0 0.024 pounds. And there are 0.45 kilograms per pound. And so we factor that out, and we end up with 0 0.0093 kilograms. So we've got our mass, and now let's try to determine what our velocity is in meters per second. All right, so we've got our six shots. We're going to add up, up all of the various uh, feet per second velocities here, and we'll divide that by six. And we've got an average velocity of 855.7 feet per second. 
So we know there are 0 0.3048 meters per foot. We can then take 855.7 feet per second, multiply it by 0 0.3048 meters per foot, and it ends up being at 260.8 meters per second. So remembering that our kinetic energy formula is one half the mass times the velocity squared, we now have all the right metric figures to put into the formula. So we can take one half times 0 0.0093 kilograms times 260.8 meters per second and end up with 316.28 joules. And so since we know that one joule equals 0.738 foot-pounds, we can take our joules, 316 times 0.738, and we're going to end up with 233.4 foot-pounds. So a 143-grain round ball traveling at 855 feet per second is going to produce an energy of 233.4 foot-pounds. And self-defense experts will tell us you need a minimum of about 220 foot-pounds of energy, over 300 foot-pounds of energy, even better, to have an adequate self-defense round. So the round ball in the 1860 Army revolver is within that zone, but barely. Uh, so it's, it's effective, but at the low end. So let's take a look at conicals and make a comparison. So we've gone through the calculations uh, once already, so we'll go a little bit faster this time. So we've got a conical bullet at 217 grains, and we're going to divide that by the 7,000 grains per pound, and we'll end up with a bullet that weighs 0 0.031 pounds. So now when we take our poundage and we multiply it by 0.454, we're going to end up with 0 0.0141 kilograms. So when we go back and take a look at the mass or weight of the round ball, it's actually about 65% the mass of the conical. So we'll see what that does in our, in our next bit of calculations. So now we're going to take a look at our second factor, which is velocity, and we will convert our velocity to feet per second. <laughs> So with our velocities here, we've got six of them, six shots, and add them all up, divide by six, and we ended up with an average of 734.1 feet per second. Multiply that by our factor of 0 0.3048 meters per feet, and we end up with 223.8 meters per second. So our conical bullet is moving slower than our round ball, and when you compare the two of them, uh, we've got greater mass with the conical but less velocity, and we'll see what that does in our formula. So plugging in all the right numbers with all of the right units is going to give us our kinetic energy in joules at 353, and we convert that to foot-pounds, and we get 260 foot-pounds for the conical bullet. So when we take a look at the two different projectiles, we see that our conical bullet has uh, more foot-pounds of energy to it than the round ball. So even though it's traveling slower, the mass has made up for that and uh, caused a, an increase in, in energy, kinetic energy, with that conical bullet. And so it's getting up there, getting a little closer to that 300 foot-pound range that, uh, that self-defense experts would tell us is the, uh, is the uh, optimal, better range for, for a self-defense type firearm. And when you look back to what Elmer Keith was saying from his conversations with Civil War soldiers, uh, you can see that that greater energy with a pointed projectile is going to get the penetration they were talking about, particularly when they were putting horses down or, or shooting uh, beef animals for food and things like that. Uh, in the round ball, uh, traveling faster, not having the energy though, but having the greater surface area uh, as it strikes a target would provide more shock. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting. It uh, had all the data, just thought we'd take a look at it, do the math, and see what these two, two projectiles do, how that might line up with what we, what we see as their application in uh, historical times, and even in hunting applications today. So just thought it'd be fun. Hope you liked it. Uh, enjoyed working through these factors with you. You can certainly do this anytime on your own as well. All those uh, conversion factors are available on the internet. And uh, give it a little thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you really liked it like I said earlier, and uh, thank you for coming.